2012 and 2013, I was playing in about six or seven bands. And uh, one of the bands I got to play with, uh, one of the people I got to play with, was the uh, legendary R&B blues singer, Sherry Sarno. I really enjoyed playing for Sherry Sarno and the Chevys because it gave me a chance to do something a little bit different than what I'm used to, and that is just sit back and, and lay the groove. Not everything is about power and being loud and being fast, and sometimes as a drummer you just sit back and you keep the beat, and that was basically my job when I played for the Chevys. Without a doubt, Sherry Sarno is one of the coolest and kindest musicians I've ever worked for. Uh, and she just has an amazing voice, an amazing gift, uh, where, you know, there's no need for the band to have any type of gimmick. Uh, she just would come in and sit down in a chair and start to sing, and that would pop this amazing voice. And in this section of the documentary, I'm going to give away perhaps my biggest drumming secret. It's called the movie, and I don't control the movie, I don't know when I'm going to see the movie, but a lot of times I close my eyes, or I don't even need my eyes closed. But I will see flashes of people, places, events, things in my life that that are, I don't know. I feel the music and I see these things while I play and I'm seeing a movie in my head that helps me produce the sounds I'm making. And oftentimes I would look at the rest of the members of this band and we were getting so into the, the music uh, that uh, I think that they were also playing their own movies in their head. And so uh, the, the biggest thing I have, the biggest secret I have is called the movie, and it's basically when you feel the music so strongly and it's triggering that part of you and that the emotions inside of you to produce the sound that you're producing. Sherry's voice, along with her whole persona, is, is, is one of just, you know, power and yet blues, but yet she sits there in that chair and brings a sense of calm. Uh, amidst any of their audiences, like, you know, hey, uh, no matter what's going on, everything will be all right, everything is okay. And I certainly needed that calmness at this point in my life. And she'll never know uh, how much I appreciated that calmness because at this point in my life, uh, things were getting pretty crazy and there were a lot of things going on. And I didn't, like I said before, I didn't know what was going to happen. And really, this uh, band here and this time period here was pretty much the calm right before the storm. Most of the places the band played were uh, just your good old Texas beer ice house. And a lot of these places I'd pull up outside and go, oh my god, this place looks rough. Or this place looks like if a bar roof fight ever broke out in this place, uh, you know, the shit is going to hit the fan. But Cherry would come in and just, like I said, have bring this whole sense of calm and peace to everybody while she sang. And the audience would feel it. And it was a really amazing thing to, to watch her do this. I mean, everybody was just sat there and just mystified by her voice. Like I said earlier, it gave me a chance to use some other drumming techniques. And one was the thing I do with my elbow, uh, and it's where I'm stretching the tom head to get different tones out of it. A lot of people have seen me do this, and they don't understand where it is, or they think it's sleep. I'm not sleeping up there. It's actually a technique that I learned from Joe Morello, who used to play for Dave Brubeck, one of my uh, former teachers. Sherry definitely has a certain charm. Uh, that uh, I've, I've never seen in like, a lot of other singers. And that is, you know, they could, her name could be up on a sign, and that place is just going to pack because people know what they're going to see. This woman's going to come in, she's going to sit down in a chair, she's going to wail out uh, Jazz Joplin songs, she's going to wail out Carol King classics, The Carpenters, Alana Moore's set. Uh, she's going to wail out all these incredible covers with this incredible voice. And at the same time, she's going to be up there talking to you as if telling a story, almost like Mother Goose. And it's amazing, amazing to watch all these bikers and, and these people out there just sit there. And it's like, uh, it's like story time to them. I mean, they just love it. They just eat, eat it up. And, I mean, there's just a real certain magic and certain charm that she's got. I just can't explain how she does it. But uh, she has the ability to just charm any room. And she sits there and she's just got that room totally into what she's doing. Sherry's worked with some of the best Texas musicians and some of the best bands that I can possibly think of. Uh, she's also done work with the Bodacious Tatas and, 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 and other people. Everybody in South Houston and Dallas and Circuit uh, knows who Sherry Sarno is. And it was honestly a, a real pleasure playing for her. And, um, 
you know, it, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's a good deal to just sit back and, and be part of the band that lets another person shine. And, and Sherry certainly does stand out and shine as one of the best R&B players uh, around. There's just absolutely no doubt about it. Though I played a short, just a short time with Chevy's, I had a, a great time. Though. 